Joining us now, Mike Summers, President and CEO of the American Petroleum Institute. Mike, welcome back. I just want you to listen to some sound on Mr. Biden's threats yesterday. Please uh, take a quick listen. But not everyone stepped up. The oil industry has not. has not met its commitment to invest in America and support the American people. It's time for these companies to stop war profiteering, meet their responsibilities to this country, and give the American people a break and still do very well. If they don't, they're going to pay a higher tax on their excess profits. All right. You know, Mike, I, we've said this before. We've talked about this. I, I really resent his impugning against the patriotism of the people in your industry, which is a very old, distinguished industry and employs a lot of people. I don't know, 11 million people or more. I mean, I think that's just right there. What, what is the view? I'm sure you talk to your leading CEOs and so forth. What are they saying about this latest sort of hot air blast? Well, it was absolutely outrageous. I can think of no industry other than the American military itself that is more patriotic than the American oil and gas industry. This is the industry that got us through World War II. It supplied 90 percent of the oil that the allies needed to get us through World War II. And we're doing the same thing now with American LNG. I was just at a terminal in Louisiana where I saw American LNG being loaded onto a tanker on its way to France to help them through the energy crisis that they're in today. So the accusation that they made on this industry, an industry, by the way, that's self-sanctioned and refused to take any more Russian crude at the beginning of this terrible war going on in Europe, an industry that withdrew from Russia on its own without mandates from the federal government, for them to be saying that this industry, the most patriotic industry that I know in our country, would be war profiteering, it's an absolutely outrageous comment. I mean, basically, President Biden and his group have spent two years attacking your industry, just attacking them. And the only other point, I, I've made it several times this week, I'll keep on making it. The thing about petroleum and petrochemicals and various derivatives, these things, not only gasoline and diesel fuel, we'll talk about that in a minute, uh, and not gas and so forth, but they permeate every aspect of everyday life. I mean, from eyeglasses to MRIs to golf balls and tennis rackets. People don't seem to understand that, or the Bidens don't seem to understand that. And yet, he repeatedly says we're going to end fossil fuels. And so the industry responds to that, I guess. They have to. Well, it is, it is unbelievable. This is an industry that really does supply the things that we use every single day. And even the you know, most ardent environmentalists are still using petrochemicals in their clothes and in their ski jackets. Uh, so you know, this is an industry that is going to survive this presidency, and it's going to continue to provide the energy that the world needs uh, every day, uh, not just the United States, but Europeans and Asians and everyone who uh, is benefiting from the, the, the American oil and gas industry. Well, the great part of the story is there's Wall Street Journal editorial, I don't know, today or yesterday, uh, after throwing $5 trillion at uh, Green New Deal type stuff, 80 percent of the world's power still comes from fossil fuels, 80 percent. I mean, the needle, has, the needle might have moved one percentage point in several decades. But I want to ask you something else, maybe more constructively. Uh, Mike, there's a lot of talk about a 25-day inventory of diesel fuel, a shortage of diesel fuels coming in the middle of the winter, could affect trucking and shipping and, you know, supply chains in general. What do you know about this? What can you tell us about it? Well, it is a, a huge concern, but uh, good news is on the way. The truth of the matter is, is that there uh, are a lot of refineries that are going through their regular maintenance procedures right now. So we expect about 5 to 8% uh, of our refining, refining capacity to come back online in the coming weeks. Another good news story is that harvest uh, season is about to come to a close, mm. which means that less diesel fuel will be used uh, in, at, by our American farmers. So uh, there are going to be more resources coming on uh, very quickly. American refiners right now are operating at the highest levels that they have ever operated at to provide uh, for American diesel fuel and American gasoline, which really powers our American economy. 
Uh, but I do think that over the coming weeks, uh, help is on the way in terms of uh, more fuel coming onto the market in those markets that desperately need it. Be nice to get some new permits to build some new refineries, but I guess that's the subject of another segment. That's much too sensible. Well, as you know, we haven't built a refinery in this country in Since, 1977, I and know. that was way before the American fracking revolution. I know, and you'll probably be criticized uh, for that, you know. Um, last one. In the Northeast, home heating fuel reserves are very low. There seems to be shortages and higher prices again. Somebody said there's a million barrels of home heating reserves. That'll last about six hours. I don't know whether the analyst is being sarcastic or not, but what can you tell us about that? I mean, I know global warming is a hot topic on the left, but you got to get through a kind of chilly and cold winter first. Yeah, I mean, and this is really a story of terrible policy. If we could build a natural gas pipeline through the state of New York, they wouldn't be using heating oil to mm. power uh, their lives and heat their homes. Uh, this is just an example of a terrible policy that has been pursued uh, by multiple governors, governors in the state of New York. And hopefully we'll be able to rectify that in the next few days. Mm. Uh, at the same time, we know that heating oil uh, reserves are low, but the story is the same. We're going to get more refineries uh, back up and going quickly, and hopefully we'll be able to get those reserves back up to where they need to be uh, in what we expect to be a cold winter season. All right. Mike Summers, thank you and the other patriots in your industry. We appreciate it.